find her. Where is she? The Girl in the Spider's Web is the new installment in the Girl in the Dragon Tattoo series, making it the second in the American Millennium series, and it now follows Elizabeth Salander on new adventures as she tries to rescue women who have been battered by men, but new missions have taken her to new places, which will take her into a dark part of her past and reveal many secrets throughout the movie. But not as many as you think. It's not a mystery anymore. Now it's more of an action movie. More of a secret agent, hacker, uh, I don't know, batman is kind of hero movie. Which is not bad per se, but if you have followed uh, Stieg Larsson's Swedish Girl with the Dragon Tattoo series, all three of them, the trilogy, you will see that it does differ a little bit as far as tone goes. They're more mystery thrillers. This one just straight goes into the action uh, movie category. Yeah. I mean, literally everything's spoiled right there in the trailers at the beginning. So, I mean, going into the movie, you kind of already have an idea of what it is. So, really, there's not a lot to spoil here in this review because if you've seen the trailer, you kind of know what the movie is. But saying that, I still really enjoyed the movie. I still had a really great time. I was enjoying the action, the the visuals, the the... There was just lots of little things in there that I really did like. So I just think a lot of people might be thrown off, like I said, with the tone change. Especially even from the first one mm -hmm. um, that was with... Uh, Noonie. Uh, 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 no, I'm yeah. talking about the American version. With, with Rooney. Uh, <laughs> with Rooney Mara. And she um, she tried to do what Numi tried to do, which was you know try to be kind of a subtle... Elizabeth, uh, speak when she needed to, act when she needed to, action came in those movies when it needed to, and even in the 2011 uh, version. But in this one, they straight up went for action, but it does make sense because it takes t place three years after the events with her and Mik uh, Mikael Blumkist. Who's that? The journalist from Millennium, who she gets involved with in the first movie. In this movie, he's very weak as a character, but it yeah. makes sense for her as a character to be um, somewhat advanced. Yeah, her, you know? I liked, yeah, I liked the direction they went with her character in a way, but with him, they they did nothing with him in this movie. Which he, was kinda, pretty, he was pretty much useless in yeah. this one. He's more I mean, useful in the other ones, and this one he's not needed. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I just feel like he was like there because he had to be in a way. Yeah, because um, cause they brought back all the, um, so uh, I'm going to call them tropes, I would say, or kind of like um, things that's... The uh, signatures. The signatures of the girl with the dragon tattoo. Are you not Elizabeth Salander? The girl with the dragon tattoo. The girl who hurts men. You obviously the tattoo. Mm -hmm. um, her, her smoking. Her smoking, her house, her the way she eats, her, her house is... Well, actually... There are some changes here. Her house is more like a Daredevil meets Constantine kind of location house. Yeah. It's kind of... And then she's got all these kind of uh, locations that she knows. And she, she is well, kind of Batman in this movie. Uh, here, 
it's straight up, oh, uh, she's going after bombs and <laughs> evil corporations. Yeah. And obviously, it's, it's not a spoiler. Her sister's the bad guy. It's in the trailer. If you saw the first trailer for this movie, you're going to see that wish... it's her sister. But it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just... No, I just wish that the there's movie not much, wouldn't... There's not much mystery to it. Yeah, because the way the movie is trying to lead up to it is like, you're not supposed to know. But they said it right in the trailers. But I guess if it's someone who's not seeing the trailers, they're going to... Yeah, but I mean, Fine, in a couple but... of years when I pop it in, like I told you, like when we're talking about it coming in the car, like I'm not going to think about the advertising as much. I'm just going to think, okay, well, what yeah. is Elizabeth Salander up to in this adventure? And it worked fine. It's yeah, just, this... she's just, you have to, you have, she's like on level 10 when she was on level 3 the last time we saw her. She's like evolved. That. She's, she's just she, somebody it... different than how we saw her from last time. And she's really, you know, holds bar. She's, you said she's, she, she's tougher in this one, especially by Claire Foy. She did a really good job, She I did think. a great job, I think. Like you were saying, like with those other, with the originals, you kind of want more. And this gives you more. Yeah. So I think, I think this is a good step forward. It kind of cranks everything up to 10 as far as like, her, you know, how she uh, uses her friends as her hacking friend is back in there and stuff too. And she's, she's more like the Alfred of the kind of thing. It's kind of funny to put it that way, but it works for her. It's pretty much uh, those kind of superhero elements, but with the girl and the dragon tattoo. And it's not bad, no. but it's really up to the viewer to decide whether this is the way they want to see Elizabeth Salander or not. That's a really so, good way of putting it. Overall, four out of five for me. I just think that some things might have been a little bit predictable, especially towards the end. Some things were like, oh, this is going this way now. Oh, who would have known? Oh, man. But that's about it. Other than that, I, I think um, it, is a, it is a shift of uh, character change for Elizabeth, but I do like where it went. Claire Foy did a great job. A lot of the other characters did too. The uh, guy who was in Sorry to Bother You, the main character, he was in it and he was really good. He was an American uh, uh, American agent trying to get information and stuff like that. Yeah. And I think he did fine, but I also think that he might have been, like you said, thrown I in think a little bit there. just started so fast. I think that's what throws me off. It oh, yeah. just starts. <laughs> so yeah, so I think that the movie really... Uh, could have maybe slowed down and try to explain some stuff, but it also kind of depends on the viewer knowing yeah. a little bit of the history of the girl with the dragon tattoo. But it also works as a awesome. soft reboot, and it kind of just goes on its own. So this yeah. could be the beginning of something new. Yeah, you could go into this this movie not have having seen the other ones and still understand everything that's going on. You'll still understand her character. Right. So, uh, so for me, I'm gonna also give it a four out of five. I also really liked it. Um, I love the action. The visuals were great. Uh, the cinematography, honestly. Perfect. That's probably my favorite part of all this whole movie is how it looked and the and the way they did the camera work. Um, but yeah, like you said, Claire Foy did a really great job. But that's I'm on the same page. I liked it. Different different pace, but I'm enjoying it. I liked it. Yeah, it was fine. It's a B movie for me. Four out of five for us. Uh, what did you guys think? What's your favorite version of the girl in the dragon tattoo? The Swedish or the American version? Have what, you read the books? Yeah, have you read the books? Have you seen this new one, the 2011 version? What did you guys think? Comment down below. Let us know. Go see this one. Really check it out. It's, not, it's a good time at the movie yeah. theater. And wow. check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, of course. And always keep watching movies. I'm concerned you won't like her. No.